Good morning. Hey folks, Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. Back at it again. Happy Daylight Savings for all those people who remember to set their clocks forward. It is quite an adjustment. As the time feels like it's slipping away every time we make this adjustment. I wonder why we even still change it at this point, but it still gets changed. I believe that daylight savings was initially done to help farmers get more daylight time to farm, but with modern technology now, you have to wonder if it's even, if it's archaic. Any which way, folks, I had an interesting weekend. Did some things I don't normally usually do. Interesting times, met with some interesting people, old friends, you know, people that reach out to you and try to ask you to help them along on the way, on the, on the way to their path in life. Some people you are friends with for a reason and some people you are friends with for a season doesn't mean any which one are bad. But I've had a lot of friends through my travels that I may have went to high school with, college with, that I have not talked to for decades at a time because I've traveled, gone outside the area where I was born and raised at, the neighborhood, the state even, where I lived at it once upon a time and resided and called home. I reached beyond those borders, beyond that microcosm, and went far out, far reaching to places that I could not expect to have ever gone in my life. And a lot of times, I think there's something I have to be a little bit more careful with, is that I can't let someone's history with me be the thing that gives them access to me. Because sometimes you get yourself in situations where you are meeting a person who you remember, not a person who is in front of you. Let me repeat that one more time. A lot of times when you have a person that you know from your own history, you're meeting a person that you used to know. But it is not the same person that is standing in front of you today, especially if it's a childhood friend. And this has happened to me many times, college buddy that you haven't stayed in contact with and you are seeing, you know, right now, come on, guy, this guy, come on, man, it's, you got to speed up, you got to step on the gas, we're entering a highway, you can't just drive 50, you got to drive faster than that, because it's a merge lane, there's trucks coming, look at this, they're still going to sit there, would just speed up and get out your freaking rear view, come on, man. Look at this right here. Now, this They think this is still going to be a lane. It's a merge on. We are in the highway. Good God almighty, man. I tell you, some people, man, just... Ugh. They're scared. Scared, they're scared to look. Scared to drive. Scared to put their foot on the gas. Jeez, man. <sighs> Any which way... And a lot of times when you meet those people from your history, you're going off of the nostalgia of your relationship, however that may have been. You could be meeting people that way. I met some people in the last 20 years that I thought I left on good terms. And I, I guess I found out that it was good terms that we left on, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean that it was good terms we left on, in their opinion. Which is interesting because, you know, you, you, you sometimes reach out to friends with the same love and, you know, friendship that and happiness that you remember them as. The good times, the things that you did that you shared together and you realize that person meets you with some level of hostility that you had not anticipated or said something off color or just a slight comment. What the heck is this? Is this a turning signal? Okay, come on, buddy. Never seen a turning signal like that. There's no yellow light or anything like that. It's just blinking red. 
any which way. And that's happened. And I was kind of put off by it. You can meet people because they see you are successful. They see your vision. They see your plan. They see you taking off. And it hurts, but you have to be a little... And I learned this from yesterday. you got to be a little questionable when you haven't heard from someone in a long time. You, you do. You have to kind of question it with some level of, you know, hey, I've got to I've got to make sure that this person is seeking me out for good reasons, especially if it's business related, you know, because I'm everything people reach me out for me now is. I rarely get I rarely get any offers for friendship. I get more offers for exchange of money. People seek me out now more to access my money without accessing my friendship. Even if I've been friends with them once upon a time. And can I blame them? No, I can't. Because people are always looking for opportunities to better their lives and you can't you can't blame people for that, you know? You can't Blame people for wanting to use you to make their lives better. It doesn't make them manipulating. It just means that, you know, those people are trying to do, it it depends on how they treat you, but they're trying to do something to better their lives, to make their lives more enriching. And a lot of times they don't have any intentions on doing you wrong or taking, taking anything away from you. But still, in order, sometimes if you're not useful, You might be useless if you can't be used. I mean, what's the point of having a hammer that you can't hammer a nail in? Okay, get out a nail in. Or a nail that would never stick into a wall. You don't find it useful. And a lot of times we get our emotions involved in a way that instead of understanding that being used is is a form of something that we use all the time. We being used is something that we do to each other. We do We're used at work, we're used at college, but there's the equivalent exchange that makes being used not pervasive, you know? And once you understand that, if there's some equivalent exchange, then it it does balance things out. It does. But again, when you are meeting people who are calling upon you, for money, funding, capital growth, and it's large amounts, not not that. You got to really, and that's something I'm going to start doing a little bit more. You got to do a little upfront research about those people, especially if you haven't had a beat on them for a long time. And one of the things I did do well is that I go see people. I, I will talk with them over the phone, but when you go and someone's looking to establish a long or or rekindle a long friendship with you, you need to see them. You know, in this generation in the world, there's something about seeing a person up front and looking them in their eyes. You can assess a whole lot differently than talking to someone over the phone. Because nine times out of 10, when you're talking with someone over the phone, you are not focused solely on them. You're not focused on their micro details that they exhibit when you are talking to them. You can't screen or ask probing questions. You can't see mannerisms. You can't ass- and not assess their environment. Something I was talking with my daughter about last night. If you're in an unknown place, you never go into a basement or an attic. Even if you're at a friend's house or place of dwelling, When you enter a place that you do not know, you want to make sure that you're aware of exits. You want to make sure that you are aware of blind spots. You never want to sit with your back to an unknown area or an entryway where you cannot see a person coming in behind you. And it's good practice when it's friends, because when it's enemies, you are going to do the same thing. You never position yourself told my daughter that last night he said hey when you walk into a place especially after a drive the one thing you want to do is stand up you never want to sit down and be made comfortable you want to walk around and be in motion 
and this is to not put people at ease, but to make them a little uncomfortable because when you walk into a place, a person automatically asks you to sit down. Would you like to have a seat? And when you stand, you now will kind of settle. You ever see like a, I'll say like even a chicken or animals, when they go to their, their nest or, or, or dwelling, they kind of kick around, stand around. They don't just go and plop down like that. And again, it's a surveying of your environment. You want to be able to look around, get to understand where your exits are. You want to be able to know where doorways are. Analyze pictures, the cleanliness of a place, what works, what doesn't work. Does it look like a home or a house or a place that people live? Do you, that you're aware that they have family members? You kind of can assess the state of a a person by the state of their their home or their dwelling. You can you can do a very much assess things if you're even meeting at their dwelling. But again, this is for in those situations where you are meeting at someone's dwelling. You want to make sure, and it's especially important for young girls to understand that when they're going over someone's house, friend or foe, friend or boy, male, you definitely want to make sure that you or when you first enter a place, you're into the general meeting area by the exit. You don't go into the depths of the place. First visit. And this is simply because you want to stay aware. You want to make sure that people, you can see who's coming in. You want to make sure that you're not being set up. And as you are a person that gains more influence in the world, this definitely will become more paramount for you to do as a practice. Now, again, I'm not anybody special. I'm no millionaire. I'm not a person that has that's one of the things I don't want people to misunderstand is that I I have I can liquidate, but I don't have transferable wealth in the form of I've got all this money just laying around, very well invested, but I don't have stuff that you could just go ahead in and just get fifty million dollars. You know, that's not it. You have your money working out into the world, not locked up in a bank vault like Scrooge McDuck. As you can see, folks, the sunrise is coming upon us. We're going into Philadelphia over by City Ave. Coming up on Gerard Avenue where the Philadelphia Zoo is. But again, whoa, it's a little look down and you're right on the divider. It's very interesting because you visit someone you know and you let down your guard. You don't necessarily have the same defenses up but again when you practice and you you practice like you're going to play is what my father used to tell me practice, practice like you're in the championship all the time you got to become more aware and you've got to make sure that you protect others the people you care about by making sure that you vet those friend or any person like that you got to vet them Make sure that you know who you are dealing with. And like I said, when you're there and you're talking with people, you can see where a person's mind at by the way you ask them questions and the way they answer them. You can tell when they're kind of making stuff up, when they're avoiding certain things. And again, like in this situation, I asked a friend, I said, what are you looking for from me? Very tough question to be confronted with but it's straight to the point because again I, I sell things and I know when someone wants to sell me on something when someone wants to present me with a good idea and I love that I do never feel if you are a true salesperson you are never ever offended by someone trying to sell you something trying to get you to invest in an opportunity that's what you do and you can't be mad at someone for trying to get you to buy in hell they got a whole show dedicated towards people trying to sell people who sell things products and items it's called shark tank and these people up here they scrutinize deals and they only will take the deals that they find to be advantageous because they are true businessmen they have the art and the skill of business dealings to look at buying opportunity or investment opportunities by the way people present 
certain items. And their, their, their mindset of always having an ear to new opportunities is what gets them the wealth that they have. It does. It really does. I, I take meetings with people who want to do sponsorships, affiliate marketing, and I do them like I've talked about in other videos with a little bit of reservation because a lot of times I do my research on those companies and they don't do any research on me. They, they're looking to figure out what's going on. What do I do? So again, when you meet with a friend that is able to bypass that, that screening surveillance, the vetting process that you would have with a business or another company, you have to meet them. You have to go and talk with them personally. You have to ask them questions and have a longer conversation. If they're not accessible to you within driving distance, then you need to definitely, definitely have a prolonged conversation with them. But you got to feel them out, man. You got to. And again, for the people on the other end, dealing with friends who may be successful, you got to realize when you meet a person that you're looking to do business with, and you have a friendship, the courtesy is the visit itself. That's the courtesy because you're friends, the visit, the interaction, the meet, sitting down and having a time to present at the table. But a lot of times you have to remember that is for the friendship component. When you're talking money, it switches into a different mode. And when you're doing that, it doesn't matter how promising or successful the opportunity that you have in front, you've got to be able to present it in a way where people can see your business acumen on display. However big or small it is, but again, you can't present opportunity if you do not have the mind to make it happen. And I've said that to people. I've said it in other videos. Ideas without action are just dreams. Ideas without action are just dreams. Opportunities without action are just opportunities. But when you don't seize them, they can never become success. Because money will only do so much for an opportunity. Without an action, without a plan, we talked about this before, opportunities will go to the waste and they become failures. I had an opportunity to buy land, to sell land, but without making a deal with the owner to purchase the property, without doing my research, without mailing information and, and deeds to the county, without hiring title companies, without hiring videographers, without sponsoring, without failing, people saying no, without having conversations, trying to get a person to say yes, they'll buy a property. When they were set on saying no, without pushing too hard, without that back and forth of up and down, climbing a mountain, go, go down and only have to climb a bigger mountain again, I would never be where I'm at right now. And where does that bring me? It brings me the ability to help others. It brings me the capital or the visibility digitally and physically to be completely on the other side of the United States where my properties are located at. But the person, because of the way I built the business, I am the biggest property that Ancestry Lands owns, me. Because I do everything in-house, mostly everything in-house. And when I do reach to do it out, out of house, it's, it's to employ others and give them income. As you can see, I'm right here in the rearview mirror, if you haven't noticed by now. And that's done for that effect, so you can see me talking just out of camera view. And like I said, I'm learning and working on different things within my business because, again, in order to get lucky to be successful, I think my 
good friend Eric Kennedy said once upon a time to me, I remember saying, preparation meets opportunity. And I know that might have been said by many people before then, but I had never heard it until I talked to him. Said that one day when we were coming from a gun range. Preparation meets opportunity. Like all you need is luck after that. You can't be successful. But again, if I don't do this, if I don't show my work, show my success, then other people wouldn't notice it. It would not give me other opportunities to take action on to become successful. Because one level of or measure of success, one measure of discipline does not mean you are a master or successful. Does not mean you are a master of success. You know, you look at Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary, Mark Cuban, um, and the two other young lady. Well, I don't know about no lady, but Bob, I think Barbara Corcoran is one of them. And then the um, lady who did, I think she's Q, Q, QVC or Home Shopping Network. She owns one of those two. And then Damon, um, Damon Johnson, the guy, the previous owner of FUBU, they don't, they're not looking at it just clothing. They look at whatever business comes through that door. What they're looking for is opportunity that they can take action on to be successful. As a business person, you have to have, you have to observe that in the world around you. I mean, you can go to business school, get a degree, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be successful in business. But again, your preparation when met with an opportunity, can lead to success. But again, are you prepared? And preparation is not not idea flow. It is actual, how do we make, if I'm given this opportunity, here is my plan. My plan. You ask people that question, that one word, it definitely, you can decide or decipher whether they are talking ideas or they actually got something that they're ready to put in action. Because believe me, if you look at this street, these people building over here, there's a plan to this process. People aren't out here just, you know, cutting up the concrete and gravel just to sit here and not, and and redo it again. They're cutting it up, putting plumbing down, making sure things are graded right, angles are right, making sure rebar is where it's supposed to be, to widen out a lane, if you will, and make sure that it cannot impede traffic flowing into the city. And if they don't have the right plan in place, I guarantee you that company will never get another opportunity to make it work again. It won't. Because again, the, the employers of people who present opportunities will not utilize them because their plan failed. See in the skyline there, we're entering the city of Philadelphia sports complex. Yesterday, I did a video driving to Jersey and showed everybody the Eagle Stadium, Philadelphia Eagles to be exact, with also the Flyers and the um, Philadelphia 76ers play, as well as the Phillies. The three fields or, or arenas, the sports complexes are right next to each other. I mean, literally within a short walking distance. It's very interesting to say, to be that close. And any which way, folks, you know, and it talks about, it connects with the video that I talked about with punctuality. Being on time is being prepared. Being on time and being ready for the opportunity that's going to show up at your doorstep or be presented to you or called in the phone or emailed to you. And the only question is, can you take advantage of that opportunity because you are prepared? You have a plan to take the opportunity when it comes, when it's presented to you. Are you prepared? You have a plan for your success. Because if you don't, the opportunity is going to pass you by. And I met many of people who actually they have passed on so many opportunities that they can't recognize when they should take one. And that's a fact, folks. And you'll never see them be successful. You won't. So I hope you understand. And I'm going to repeat that again, folks. You heard it here first because I came out with it. Let it not be said that it was somewhere else because I've got the videos to show and prove it that 
Ideas without action are just dreams. I've heard a lot of great ideas, but I hear less plans. Here, what we could do, but I've never seen something worked out with paper and pencil. But they plan that looks like math, but written down, process steps, drafts. A lot of verbiage, saying, saying a lot, but not saying anything at all. And again, you got to have a plan. Any which way, folks, I'm Phil Davis, Ancestry Lens. Don't forget, my book is on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt, A Beginner's Guide to Vacant Land Investing. Folks, remember, own property or you'll be owned as property. Phil Davis, and I'm out. Are you confused with today's real estate market? With high interest rates and overpriced housing, it can be hard to find something to own at the right price. Available on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt by author Philip H. Davis is a game-changing book that invites you to embark on a thrilling exploration of this often overlooked asset class. This book is your roadmap to unlocking the secrets of vacant land investment. Inside these pages, you will uncover the transformative power of vacant land as a wealth-building tool. Discover how to spot promising properties, assess their true value, and capitalize on market trends. From understanding zoning and permits to leveraging financing strategies, you will gain the knowledge and confidence to make savvy investment decisions. With each page you turn, you will gain a deeper understanding of the profound impact your investments can have on the world around you. Getting dollars from dirt is not just a guidebook, it's a call to action. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a curious novice, this book will empower you to tap into the immense potential of vacant land and embark on a journey toward financial freedom and a brighter future.